Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming back to the channel. Yes, thank you for coming back and hanging out with your girl, Deb. Yes, Lord. Well, I had the opportunity to do something that one of my family members wanted me to do. They wanted me to take a look at Love and Marriage DC. And I was like, okay, okay, I got the time to do it. Didn't have nothing to do on Saturday. And I watched the episode too. Yes. Of Love and Marriage DC. Now, of course, we got three families out here on the playing field. They got the Tyler family. Then we got the Samuels family. And then we've got the... Who that family was? Oh, I don't forgot that quick. The, well, I mean, we got the Tyler family. We got the Silver family. And we have the Samuel family. And I don't know what kind of... Uh, family we got between winter and kelvin but <laughs> we're gonna talk a little bit about them whoo they ain't been married that's winter right there y'all they ain't been married less than a year really <laughs> he got sent home to go live in his mama basement i said god damn <laughs> that man look too old and he's fine he's fine now but lord have mercy he went home to his mama basement mama and daddy basement at that but anyway we go on into the story. Like I said, we're coming in with three main families and, and one put off family. And that's going to be um, Kevin and Winter. But we're going to go on and get in the situation. We have um, Monique and I think her name is Ashley. They go and meet and have a little lunch or whatever. But I mean, God, dog, didn't Monique learn anything with being on Real Housewives of Potomac? Because... Her ass was down now, tripping down now. Then she caught herself putting her hands on Candace's neck. I mean, God, oh, what's wrong with Portia and Monique? Okay. But they weren't hearing that shit from Monique. I think she got fired, even though she said she left. But I think she got fired. Because anytime you put your hands physically on somebody, that's an assault charge. Okay. And, you know. When you're working for Real Housewives of Atlanta or any other franchises, you know, other than Atlanta, you can't you can't fight, you can't press charges either. Okay, you just have to work it out amicably. And I'm pretty sure money changed hands if you get my drip in order for those charges not to stay in stick, okay? Oh I did a video on that somewhere in my catalog of videos. Talking about the do's and don'ts of working for Bravo. And um, what they will and what will not allow. Okay. Because we know Portia didn't go to jail. She went to jail for the out When she went down there and took a little pretty picture. Because it wasn't the same picture that you and I. As simple individual citizens. With, you know, they got the whole line of how tall we are. And everything sitting in the black. Like white and black. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, child, it's a whole different situation when you're not a reality star or a star. Boy, they don't get the uh-uh, they have the, the orange suit in a minute, okay? In a hot flash second. But when they get the uh, superstars go down now, the reality star, they, you know, they come in with what they wearing and leave out with what they wearing. They ain't seen a damn orange jumpsuit, nor get physically searched, if you know what I'm saying. Okay. But like I said, we go on into it. We got um, we got uh, hey, put my notes here. Okay, hold on, guy. But yeah, Monique is really stanky on this show. I, I don't like her. I don't. I, I, I like God dog. No. Did why you and Chris didn't get a divorce? I think y'all would have been better off because either y'all making this uh marriage struggle up for a storyline. But I'm telling you, y'all don't need to be together because somebody's going to catch a stroke over there. Seriously. I think it's going to be Chris. 
a Chris, he always got a like, you know, he a big. It's almost like Beauty and the Beast or something. But Chris ain't no bad looking man. He just huge as hell. You know what I'm saying? Woo! But anyway, um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't take. If I was a man, I could not take Monique. I couldn't. I couldn't. I could not threaten her. Like I was like, uh, we need to get a divorce. We need to go to counseling or some. Cause we ain't working. We ain't working. I think Chris has been a little bit too lenient and too bit uh, too much understanding with uh monique because she oh i can't see nobody being with her i can't i cannot see it but she just over the top she too much too much and she always around the corner somewhere looking to see what you're doing peeping over your shoulder peeping up on your your, your foot pe pe peeping up on your ass just actually just everywhere lord it ain't the good kind where you want somebody to be over there everywhere with you no no it's just like oh my hand almost got close to you got we almost made contact <laughs> Child, man, what well, is going into him? I just broke him up into the couple. So, we'll talk about Quick Silver. He's a DJ, you know. Think he a little something, something. Ain't never four feet. Okay? I asked Shasta. I said, he a little people? And she said, no, nah, mama. He ain't no little people. I said, well, damn, he's short as hell. He's about as short as T.I. Okay? But anyway, we talking about Quick Silver and Ashley Silver. Okay? Now, that's uh, uh, Irena and James and... I don't know about James. He he giving me a low down dog. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. He might have put some physical hands on a uh, writer, but that's quick. Uh quick silver and um what's her name? What the hell is her name? Ashley Silver. Okay, but we got Ashley, you know, she needs to to me she just needs to sit sit, sit somewhere down. She got me stuttering over him. <laughs> you see y'all heard that? Scratch, 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 scratch. I was scratching for you, okay? But anyway. Ashley, she just too much, okay? She got a nice husband, apparently, or hypothetically, because we don't know. You know, once they out of our eyeshot sight, we don't know what the hell they doing, okay? So, you can only see when they in front of you, in your presence, that you can speak for their um, character, okay? But anyway, like I said, uh, that's Irena and uh, James. We're going to get back to them, okay? So, y'all know the players, here y'all know that's monique right okay y'all know that, that big mouth monique right there whoo i'd like put a muzzle on her put a muzzle on her we don't need to have her talking no more Ooh. and see that is um crazy ashley ashley you know thinking she got to be doing this that and the third and she's just so busy she, she with the kids this and third and quick silver over there he trying to hide from him. i know he he, he he trying to say they got him working, but he got his own self working. Cause he don't want to be at home with his wife. That's pretty much what it is. He got all these women floating around him. He's a DJ and all that kind of stuff. And one of their sponsors is DTLR. I think that's a um, apparel store or something like that. But you know what I'm saying. You know, his man, his, um, what do you call it? Manager. Uh, I think his name's Caesar. He pretty much, um take care of all of his publicity and wherever he had to go and and do shows or host or do dj and i hell i don't know but i know he's a radio, radio personality okay we do know that and he got a cold uh female with him he's got her name it's not even really, really important okay but we got ashley like i said she's uh meeting with uh monique they having a little chit chat here they discussing and, and swapping stories of how bad their husbands is but they love them you know they ain't trying to give them up just that but you're throwing salt on the man you know what i'm saying if the man being decent he ain't being on you you ain't got a word your bills i mean all your bills are paid every month you know on time you riding in a nice ride you got nice clothes, you're curing straight, you know, they clothes straight, you know, their little bank account straight, y'all bank account straight, um, what else we got going on? Well, you know, you live in a luxury life, just put it like that, and, uh, you ain't got to want to do for nothing, okay, the man's setting you up, god damn it, Ashley's talking about, he don't spend no time, I got to be him with the kids, I got to do this, this, I like, girl, what you want, you want that kind of lifestyle? Or you want him to have you working out there and y'all split everything 50 50. Hell, you still gonna be arguing and you still ain't gonna like the situation. So sit back and shut the hell up. Okay, that's why I put him up. I was I fed up with her. I was fed up with her, guys. I was fed up with her. I couldn't take her no more. Whew. 
She, she, she seemed like one of them privileged people. You know what I'm saying? And you just got to complain about something. I'm like, okay, if we take everything from you, you got to go work a full-time job. Your kids got to be taken care of with some sitters or, or some caregivers. And you ain't there with them. They taking on a uh, caregiver's personality because they spend an 8 to 12 hours with them. And then you got to go put up with some bullshit on a job that you don't really care for. And then your husband over there working, whatever, make it do what it do. Then you're going to have something to say then. You know what I'm saying? So i like, let's cancel Ashley right off the bat. Okay, we're going to cancel her ass. Then we got the Monique. Monique going around here just saying this, that, and the third. You know, she thinks she loving her. But I'm like, Carlos King, Carlos King, did you make the girl the princess of the show or something? Because she always being seen in her confessionals talking about this, that, and the third. She got the most talk time than anybody else on the cast. I'm like, damn. What is it? She making more money than the rest of them, too? I'm like, we need to silence her song and let her listen a little more. She always talking about Chris don't listen. She don't listen. Because the mouth be going, wah, 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 wah. I'm like, damn, Charlie Brown. But anyway, um, let me see. Well, Ashley was really talking to uh, Monique about, you know, her husband be out DJing and she get kind of get like, you know, uh, jealous of this and the third and he's around a lot of women, you know, the temptation is there and, you know, but I'm like, he love the environment, girl. He, he making y'all money hand over fish, right? The women are going to come. You already know what it is. And you probably met him when he was a DJ. Because you were one of them groupies trying to get him. So I guess how you get him is how you lose him. Is that not right, girl? Is that not right, Ashley? Okay, so just think about that for a minute. And shut your mouth half the time. Just shut up, okay? Don't want to hear about it. Um, Then throughout the um, event when they're sitting there um, at Monique's house. Because they got a little uh, dinner thing going on. She wanted to invite all her friends or whatever. The friends that they trying to show on this uh, sitcom or whatever reality show. And then, um, you know, Winter is the one I showed y'all. The one that's having trouble with Kevin. Uh, they've only been married like maybe nine months. And then they started having problems. And he had to go back and live in his mom and dad basement. And, you know, actually supposed to be one of these uh, expert relationships people uh, personality or whatever she she meets people she uh she helps people find each other uh kind of like a matchmaker type thing but anyway she's a re relationship coach or something like that and so actually gonna you know actually gonna really throw salt on them me talking about where well, if you are a real good coach then why the hell your, your shit fucked up <laughs> Wait, no, 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 no. Ashley coming from the side is Ash. That's see, that's Irena and James. But we're gonna get to them. But uh, I like, no, you didn't try to come at her. Now, I got Porsche up in him. Who, I, I, well, you know, hey, when you're tired, some, some, you know, get some little slips here and there, they, they, they come in. But anyway, uh, past that point, uh, what was I saying? I lost my concentration. After I saw that picture from Porsche, I'm like, how the hell she get in there? But anyway, you put her in there, Dale. You put her in there. That's why. And that's because my pictures were kind of small and shit. I had too many of them, and I was trying to condense them and stuff. And they came like a little, you know, a little mini thing. So, you know, I got four eyes, and I still couldn't see the shit. But anyway, see, and I got Phaedra up in there. You know, this kind of messed up, ain't it? But y'all bear with me. It's almost 10 o'clock. I should have actually been in the bed. But I had promised one of my, um... YouTuber family members that they wanted me to uh, do um, marriage and medicine. Not damn, what the hell, marriage and medicine? God, what's going on? Love and marriage, DC. And I said, let me look at it. And I had some free time on Saturday, so that's why we're here. I kind of enjoyed it. And then uh, my daughter actually liked it, the Huntsville one. But I couldn't fool with Martell. I couldn't. I'd be coming up here just strictly talking about him for the whole damn hour. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Y'all get tired of me. But, you know, I, I don't like that loser. Martell's a loser. But anyway, um, where are we going? We got Ashley. Come, okay. She came from there talking to you. Okay. Okay. Um, that's what she, Ashley's a relationship coach. And, um, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, that gun. Ashley came. Well, no. Winter is a relationships coach and since Winter's marriage, her second marriage is going south real quick, fast in a hurry. Uh and it must have been all them times she was having sex with him because she was saying when they first got together they were having sex eight times a day. 
I'm like, girl, you should be wore out and so down. And where you can't even move. But, you know, hey, she might was just, you know, hey, she just a second marriage. So she was getting it in how it fit in, okay? And everything was cool and calm. Um, that's Ashley right there, y'all. But um, Ashley was coming to her at the dinner that Monique was throwing, saying, you know, you're supposed to be a relationship coach, but then your marriage going south. And I'm like, what? Okay, so that, that that was bad for her to do that. Uh, and then Ashley thought that turning 36, she would become a hag, an old hag. So we see what kind of mentality that Ashley is in, all right? Ain't nobody listening to her. Her husband ain't even listening to her. He just trying to make the money flow in, keep her in a lifestyle that she's been used to, and it won't be no concern or, or issues that way. Okay, and then Quicksilver, you know, they having a little uh, luncheon or something uh, before they go to the big dinner that Monique is throwing for them because she's doing it vegan style. And to me, it seems like Quick, he likes meat, okay? He is a meat eater, so he's like, we need to stop off and let me get a little, thump, uh, a little bit of uh, something to relax my stomach, so I won't be, it won't be growling and stuff at the table, cause I know I'm not gonna eat that play play food, that tofu shit. I'm not gonna do it. That what Quick was saying, he was telling, um, what's her name, Ashley, she's supposed to be a pescatarian or whatever. But I'm like, child, give her a few more weeks, she'll be back to eating meat, okay? But anyway, they sitting there talking and. You know, she ain't talking big like she was talking with Monique and stuff. But we, we know she crazy. We know I, I know she was crazy right off the bat. But she she liking her position. But she just want to complain here and there. And we ain't got time for it. So we're going to move on. We're going to move on to Chris and Monique Samuels. Okay? We got Monique. She just, you know, she a full-fledged bitch. I'm going to tell you. She's a bully, a bitch, and I can't stand her. All right. Monique, I don't even know how. How is it possible that Chris stay with you as long as 10 years y'all been going strong i know it's been more downs than it has been ups but girl i mean the mama didn't even like you and i remember that from platonic when you came on i think it was season five or something like that that, that nobody like you on that show <laughs> you get you, your personality was just too strong overbearing and you, you weren't you weren't, pl you, you just weren't personable. You had no likability to you. So I knew you were going to be in trouble. But I had stopped doing merit, oh, uh, not merit medicine, but uh, Potomac, you know, probably before you got there. Maybe a, a episode before or a season before you got there. But I, I kind of saw you because I'm going back and forth to see if I want to go back and review again. I'm like, nah, it's taking too much time out my day. To be doing, you know, reviews where I have to sit and watch shows and then come back and get out my commentary. So I had to pick and choose. I had to pick and choose. Uh, if you know, if I'm getting hits off of it, that's cool. I continue to do those. The ones I don't get hits off of, you will probably never see me waste my time again. It just is what it is. Okay. Then um, we got um. I just want Chris to threaten a divorce. I really do. Just to see how she was shaking her boots. Because, you know, Chris is giving me this henpeck type of a man that does in and everything for his wife. Or for, you know, any, anybody really that he care about. And that's a good thing. But then it could be a bad thing. You know, it's like your Achilles heel uh, situations. And, and uh, I don't know. Chris is he, he doing too much. But I did like what he told Monique to hush because she was not giving him enough time to explain his position on um, when both of them had COVID. And she was wanting him to do this, that, and the third for her. And she felt like Chris didn't do anything. He just left her, you know, by herself. And he got, you can tell he was getting mad at that, that dinner table because he said, hey, wait a, wait a minute now. Okay, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna play me like no sucker. You ain't playing me to the left. Let me tell my story. And she kept going on and on and on. And he just told her to hush, you know. When can he speak? He let her spoke. He let her speak. Now he want to be spoken. I mean, well, hell, y'all know what I'm talking about. He let her speak. Now he want to. He want to have his turn to speak. Okay, so it's pretty much what it was. She looked like she was crazy, like she had saw. I don't know hell coming for or something. You know the devil coming for when he said hush. And uh, technically, a man shouldn't have to tell you. You should be very respectful. And you can see how the uh, tone was going. You see how the energy was flowing. She should have shut her mouth in the beginning. But no, that little, that little pint size. Girl, she pack a punch. And it's like, Chris, slow her down. Threaten the boys. Even though you know you ain't going to do it, but just threaten. See what she would do. Oh, she probably shaking in her boots, honey. Shaking in her boots. But anyway, 
um you know they're sitting at the dinner table pretty much you know chit chatting of course you know uh monique she's doing the most as usual and she's flaunting that uh she's going not saying family we all gone she's just saying she gone she planning um uh, to go to africa she was even uh trying to be a little pompous about it like they can't go like the rest of the people at her table can't go to africa you know what i'm saying you, they can go too so it ain't no big deal you know a lot of people don't went to africa before talk what you know show what you can do okay but anyway uh yeah um she then she go on and start saying you know her kids homeschool you know what i'm saying like Nobody else can't have their kids homeschool. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, girl, you're doing too much. Doing too much. But, um, you know, she, she, she really born to hear a lot of everybody. And, you know, everybody look like, you know, she just want to tell her business. Like, she living better than everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Oh, miss, like, she keep, like, she is the Joneses. You know what I'm saying? They trying to keep up with her. Not. But anyway. Yeah, she, um... You know, just making all this stuff, and, you know, James was chiming in uh, about, you know, Africa, and y'all going to go see where the giraffes come to the window, y'all get to feed them. And she's like, yes, we're going to do all that. We're going to, and Chris just looking like, mm, I ain't know we were going to Africa. You know, it's like, he looked like he was like deer caught in headlights or something. Like, we discussed this shit. You know, what is she talking about? She talking about using my money? Because it seems like Chris is a very well, uh, savvy man where he he watches his his dollar his dime his coins his bills he watch them and he invests well because he know he has definitely surpassed the time to even try to do anything in the athletic field and you know i'm pretty sure he has a little business things going on to, to create more revenue streams here and there but he he, he ain't going broke he's like mm -mm, too damn old I don't got hit upside my head, my body, I always got arthritis stuff going on. I'm still trying to lose some weight because I'm heavy. I ain't playing the sport no more. You know, he, just, he got his own little things he's going with that he's dealing with that it don't seem like Monique gives a shit about. Okay, I'm like, how y'all get hooked up again? How y'all get hooked up again? Okay, because it don't, it don't seem like nobody, you should be with Monique. He called her Monique. We call her Monique. Okay, I call her helpful. Okay, because that's the way I'm going with her. She ain't that much a little helpful. Uh, and a gold digger, you know, get, get, made sure she got three kids. Talking about she, she don't believe in birth control. She do the PO method, pull out and start laughing and shit. I'm like, girl, you crazy as hell. But uh, get a vasectomy, get a vasectomy, Chris. Get a vasectomy, okay? But anyway, uh, we go on. Let me see what else they were talking about. Oh, uh, Monique was telling Chris to go on and give his version, his side of when he experienced talking with Kevin. And Kevin is the, uh, Winter's uh, husband. And he goes and said, you know, well, we, I, 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 I don't know what to say. I said, well, damn, Chris, say something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't know. I always leave and not say something. Say something, Chris. We like to hear you speak. Because your wife about to give us, you know, on our goddamn nerves, okay? Please speak, Chris. So, uh, he wanted to say, you know, he met with uh, Kevin, and Kevin was very emotional. He felt his pain, and, and he was saying he was kind of confused himself of what happened and why his partners were pretty much banishing him. Or, uh, really, they weren't banishing him. They were leaving, meaning he was going to be running his own company by himself because they had all 86 got that dope. They got gone. And so, uh, and we do see a part in there where Chris and... Uh, Kevin are talking and you know Kevin is being so long winded and you know it seemed like we could have been playing the violin we could have been strumming on the guitar we could have been beating the drums and then Kevin would still be over there damn talking you know what I'm saying you know what I'm for them kind of folks just keep going on and on you been on took a nap on the asses with your eyes open <laughs> And all the only reason why they wouldn't know that you're not listening to them because you end up snoring, okay? But that, that he was just real, real, oh, I even would like got tired of him, like, mm-mm, mm-mm, let me go get a drink of water. Came back, he's still talking. So, it was really another here nor there. Chris really didn't, you know, give him a leg up to say, no, nah, I believe him. He just got, he getting a bad rap. You know, maybe we should just wait it out with him. You know, everybody pretty much had dogged him out. And then we had Winter sitting at the table uh, with her host. Um, 
which was Monique and Chris, and she was telling them her side of the story. And, you know, she was saying basically that he, uh, his business partner said he's in a multi-million dollar worth of debt. He was sitting, spending company money on private things for his kids and this, that, and third. I'm like, okay, all right, mm-hmm, okay. So that's pretty much, we didn't want to hear too much about them because, like I said, they are not the three main couples that are showing up and showing out on this show. But then just go back, touch a little bit about Monique and how arrogant she thinks she is. She went over there to, uh, there was some radio station, WPG something in um, D.C. And she uh, knew they were looking for a, a woman with kids or a woman that happens to be a mother. And they needed that kind of feel for their show that they're putting together. And she'll be hosting with this other guy. And uh, she was very excited about the opportunity. I don't know why they called her in from the get-go. Uh, they should have just had a telecommunicate, well, you know, a conference call or do a, a telemed thing type of situation or telebroadcasting or Skyping. Uh, they could have did that and that we didn't have to have this scene. But she went and that's her right there. She's being interviewed by, I don't forgot what his name is. Maybe they'll show up there. But she's really interested at... Uh, at the position that they're hiring for so i think it was just more so a meet and greet and they wanted to the, the the stage what do you call it the stage manager or the radio manager was asking her how does she deal with conflict and because they don't need drama that what they saw her being around when she was on the reality show the potomac housewives of potomac they, they said they don't need that Mm -mm. Don't bring it to their doorstep because mm -mm, no, they, that's not what they're looking for. That's not what they're shopping for. That's not what they're interviewing for. So they pretty much asked her how does she deal with conflict. And, you know, she talking about, well, if they bring the drama then at my door, then I'm going to have to deal with it. I'm like, oh, see, you ain't got a job. <laughs> you don't have a job, baby. And I hope they really don't give it to you because you're just doing too much. You're doing too much. I can't take it. So we'll have to watch and see whether or not she gets the job and she goes back home. And, uh, cause she thinks she had a, a, a good interview, but me, after she said certain things about, you know, how she would handle conflict and will she be bringing the drama like she brought on, uh, the Real House of Potomac show because they're not a reality show, they're a business, you know, they have sponsors and, um, you know, you have to, you know, total road, you know what I'm saying? You, you can't be up here and fighting with folks and definitely not putting your hands on nobody. Um, so... Yeah, that was him, Todd. Uh, so he seemed like he was very pleased with her. That she was really what they were looking for. But I think they really have to rethink the situation of what caused her to leave her position uh, on Potomac. And then she's doing still a reality show now. So, I mean, it's good press for them. Because um, she'll be shown on the show doing something at the radio station. And they'll get more advertising dollars that way as well. But I, I don't know. Um, me, personally, nah, I wouldn't take a chance. Mm -mm. She like Porsche, you never know. Then, you know, quicker you hire, the quicker you're going to fire, you know, that type of situation. But, uh, yeah, she went back home and told Chris about it. And Chris was like, oh, okay, I got to stand. You know, because he was telling Calvin as well. He's he, he been lax. He's been lax. And Monique been getting on his ass pretty much. And he got to show up and prove. He got to, you know, get back to the... Uh, romancing part and and doing what she wants i was like okay henpeck man you go on to an early grave because uh pretty much she gonna drive you to an early grave which how she going on but we move on from there we go to james and irena uh, tyler um we seen her flash and him flash across the screen they're a couple they've been married 30 years uh 30 for 30 years and he's been basically expressing to the people at the table uh, the dinner um, that Chris and um, Monique had invited him to, him and his wife. He was saying it's been a lot of ups and there's been a lot of downs. It's like a roller coaster ride. Uh, and he said right now the situation that they're in, he's loving it. Um, I guess he didn't love it the, the, the latter 20 years they had put in. But um, yeah, there he ran on be talking about what really made her second guess about her marriage early on when she felt that uh, inf infidelity played a big part now she never she, she said it she never caught him but a lot of people were coming to her doorstep to her ear 
however you want to see it. They were getting the message to her that he is not being faithful. Okay. Now he's supposed to be like this party go party go guy. I don't know if he's a DJ or he just throws elaborate type parties all across uh the world or whatnot. But he's the go to person to come in and, and get your party jumping. So I don't know if he's a DJ or I don't give a shit really because it seems like he runs her instead of them being in a 50-50 relationship. It seems like he says this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to go down and you're going to have to be a part of it or not. However you see it but I'm not changing. He's a truly alpha male and uh, you could tell when he was telling uh, his own wife to hush. When, <coughs> excuse me, when she was trying to, you know, make a point or she was trying to say something about their marriage and what she had to go through and this, that, and the third. But you can tell she's kind of struggling with a lot of things and she's still struggling with it. Uh, he don't give a shit about it or anything of that nature. But, uh, yeah, he just feels like one of the controlling type men. He's he's not having a good time. He doesn't have a good relationship with his oldest son. Uh, that's I think he's the third, fourth. I think he's uh, Tyler of the fourth or something to that nature. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, um, Ira Irena had went with her son to go look at a car. She said she's not paying for it. She's not doing this, that, and the third. I'm like, well, what the hell are you doing that car lot for, baby? What, what you on the car lot for if you're not going to do nothing for the man, okay? But anyway, him and his dad, I think he's doing some illegal stuff as far as messing with the ooey and transporting it here and there, okay? And uh, his dad is not pleased with it. That's for Irena. <coughs> and uh, he's not pleased with it. And she's like caught in the middle because she wants her son to be near her. She wants her husband to be near her. And, he, and they, they need a, a bridge. To cross over. So they kind of use a Quicksilver to spar a little. Yeah, that's that little helper. That, that, that him. Yeah. That's James. And that's Urena. And like I said, uh, you can tell. You can, you can tell it's like a Jay-Z, Beyonce thing. But, you know, Beyonce get tired. She, she gonna, she gonna let folks know. You know, quick fast at her. What, who really ran the pants? Who, who really wore the pants in a relationship? But like I said, um... That's the son. That's his son. Not his son, but James' the son with the picture y'all had just saw earlier with, you know, the uh, the hat. She was wearing a uh, fedora hat. That's their son. So he's been doing a lot of strange things for some change. You see what I'm saying? And the dad hasn't been liking it. It's like the dad had set the tone saying, either you're going to do it my way, this way, or you're going out the highway. You're going out the door. There's no room for you to be here. But. With all of that said, and them not really having a relationship that's been positive, the mom was out there saying, come to your daddy's birthday party. Uh, no, come to our 30th anniversary party or whatnot. And it would be nice if you show up. And she was saying that, you know, I, I want you to do right by yourself because I would hate for somebody to come and uh, tell me that you're dead. And, you know, she got emotional and shit. And. You know, same thing every mother and dad go through with their child. It's not doing something that they uh, approve of. You know, it's going to cost them either to be in jail or in the graveyard. Uh, so, yeah. But that's all I had, really, guys, for, um, what do you call it, Love and Marriage DC. Uh, one of the projects from Carlos King. I mean, <laughs> it's the, I was enjoying some of this. I ain't going to lie. I was enjoying some of it. Some of them were making me laugh like that. It, it was really getting to me, y'all. <laughs> And then, like I said, I was just going between D.C. and Huntsville. D.C. and Huntsville. And Wanda is something over there. But I, I just didn't like it. My Terry got on my nerves. He really got on my nerves. So, uh, if y'all like it, love it, got to have more. Then I'll be doing, you know, each episode as it's being shown. But I have to look at the numbers. I have to look at the people. If the people ain't like it, ain't no sense me doing it. Okay? But I gave it to y'all. And uh, I want to thank my... Uh, YouTube family member who wanted me to do it. See, I did it for you. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. It was all about you and me bringing it to fruition. So, I did it. I did it to the uh, utmost ability that I could. And that's time for Deb to go to sleep. Okay. <laughs> time for Deb to go to sleep, girl. But that's all I got, y'all. I'll see y'all next video. Bye-bye.